the encrypted text looks like that and let's decrypt it now so we'd go again run and give the name of the encrypted file now encry p t e d remember this is happening with shift 3 you i'm i just hard coded it you could change it up according to your needs and you can make it even better and make it more flexible hey there coders today we're going to be making a really cool encryption slash decryption tool using c plus plus this is going to be purely based on c plus plus we're going to use some encryption and decryption schemes and this is going to be purely command line based i would like to also tell you that i have other command line based projects and other projects that i've done in the past you could check all of them out in my youtube channel you could check the playlist as well um, but in this one we're going to be creating this encryption slash decryption project really cool and really exciting and let's get started so the first thing that we would like to tell you is what is encryption and decryption in just real simple terms i would like to tell that encryption is the process in which we get a readable message in a readable format and then we convert it to something that is unreadable and once you do that you could uh, bring it back using the decryption process and that is just converting the you know unreadable form back to its original form and this is for security purposes again this video is going to be explaining the one of the caesar cipher techniques it's an encryption uh, technique called the caesar cipher and this is purely based on education uh, and i'm just teaching you how um, a basic encryption scheme works uh, and this is not applied in you know real world applications anymore because it's really easy to break and it's just you know based on alphabets so let's go forward to what a caesar cipher uh, encryption scheme is so in the simplest of forms caesar cipher works like the following when suppose you have a text let's say a letter so with a fixed number of positions on the alpha for, for example if i have a shift of one now the shift is the, like how many shifts are you gonna try, you know shift the letter now if i have a i could do a shift one that means the now the encrypted text will be b so a would be replaced by b b would become c and so on that's if i did shift one but if i did shift let's say three then a would become three more spaces so it would be one two three it would go back to, um it would go one two and three it would go to d so that is the shift and it could also go in negative and that's when decryption comes but that's basically the working of a caesar cipher um again this is pretty simple one of the most simplest uh encryption standards and i'm let's get started with the you know working of this project and the first thing that we got to do is we got to create a main.cpp file so i just create a main.cpp file here i'm gonna have to include my io stream header file that i always use and i also include um some other file that i might need later on but i'm uh you know i'm gonna try to split all of my projects like i normally do so i would just do it right now so one would be called the encryption.h this is where my header files will be and then there's one called the encryption.cpp which will be the implementation to the header files now to have this linked properly, you could have the hash include and you would name the header file encryption.h right in here and that should add it properly. Now let's go to the main function and uh, let's return it with a zero for now. Now I would normally not use namespace standard but just to save time I'm using namespace standard. All right, so what I would do first is I would like to read a text file. So the whole process is if I create a text file here, let's say I created a file and called it sample.txt. Now, if I wrote something like hello, this text would have to be converted to a cipher text. The cipher text is the text that uh, will be the encrypted form of this message so that any person can't read this, right? And they could only read it until they know the shift know the pattern of how i'm shifting the values now we're going to create an application that will work for both uppercase letters and as well as lowercase letters so in here we have h as uppercase but right now i'll just give it a small abc example all right so for abc we have let's suppose the shift 
Now shipped only us, we're going to know. This is like our key, the secret key that we know. Now what happened is that the shift is three. Three means that all of this will go what, three steps forward. So A will go B, C, B, C, D, and then E. We'll go E. And then B would go C, D, E. So wait a minute. So let's do that again. So shift three means first is A, and then it's B, C, D. So this is D. Then B will turn into C, D, E. And C will turn into D, E, F. So it will turn into this as our encrypted form. So this is our encrypted form. And to decrypt it, we'll just say we need a shift of now. Uh, if I bring this up here, this was for our encryption. So shift of three was for our encryption. And for decryption, we'll do. Okay, so I think it's not copying it. So shift of minus three would be for our decryption. And for decryption, it would just go backwards. Again, D, it would go um, C, and then B, and then A. And then B would come for that, and C would come for that. And backward, and we'll come back to our original form. So we would retrieve our original text, ABC, from this. This was one of the most simplest examples. Uh, for uppercase letters, we'll have this condition where if it's H, uh, you know, like for hello was H, right? H-E-L-L-O. Now, if I said, uh, let's say, a shift key for, let's say, one, a two, that means H after H is H-I and then J. So J will be capitalized. And the rest will be, you know, based on the on their shift. So E will be um, E-F-G. So it would be G. So something like that and, uh, you know, forward. I hope you got the understanding of uh, how the Caesar cipher would work. This is just a rough explanation. If you want more explanations, then I would highly encourage you to check on the internet and, you know, do a little research yourself. But I guess uh, this is pretty much pretty simple and I hope you got it. Um, now what we're going to do is just put in the hello there. Um, and I'm going to say uh, hello there is my, you know, message. So we're going to go back to our main function. And over here, we're going to uh, try to read that file, this file, the sample.txt that we're trying to encrypt. So to do that, we could do standard colon colon string. And we say file name. So this is going to be the name of our file. And that, remember, again, we don't need to add in standard C colon colon because we already have the new namespace standard defined here. So I could just keep it like this. And this would be the file name that we're trying to read. The other thing that we need is the mode. Mode is actually going to be defined either encrypted mode or decrypted mode. So the first thing I would do is I would get the file name from the user. So I would say enter the file name. And that should be something that the user should provide. And I could get the uh, file name using the get line, which is, is able to read more than you know one entire line. And then after that, when I press enter, it would just, you know, give me that entire line. So I could combine it with two things. One, I could combine this with a CN. So I, I would say CN and CN also, there are some leading white, white spaces that could occur. So to prevent, you know, having white spaces uh, before or after, you could uh, have this standard colon colon white space thing. And this would, uh, you know, ignore all those white spaces and won't cause any problems. The last thing that we would like to do is give the name of the file uh, that we're trying to read. So it's file name right here. And that is pretty much it. So we could just uh, remove this again. Uh, we don't need and you could just give it as WS, just making it a little more simpler. So see in uh, read all and ignore all the white spaces of from the file name string. So file name contains what contents? It contains hello there. It's going to be saved somewhere. Now, now actually, I'm not reading the uh, file name right now. Right now, I'm just saying, what is your file name? So I'm going to have to type in sample.txt like that because the sample.txt is the file name over there. That's why I created this get line function.
the next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to ask him, I ask the user either um, the encryption would work, would work or the decryption. So I would just say encrypt or E or decrypt uh, for D. So like that. And that is the question here. Like that semicolon. Now, what would I have here is I would get the mode from the user like that. And this mode is basically the remember that mode I was talking about the encrypt or decrypt mode. After that, I would have to check if either the user pressed E or D. So I would say if mode is equal to E or if the mode is equal to the uppercase E. Remember, the user could type in either uppercase or lowercase here, um, then I would have to create this function, which is going to be defined in my encryption.h. And I have to have implemented, I mean, it would be declared here and it would be defined here. And that would be called the encryption um, encrypt file method. So what I would do is I would actually first start out and create that. So hash if not define and then let's just give the convention of giving it the entire name. So encryption and uh, underscore H. So hash define encryption underscore H. So if not defined, then define. Then we have a hash include string. And I'll also uh, add in using namespace standard and what we're going to do is we're just going to give the signature of the function that we're going to be creating and it's called encrypt file that it will return a boolean true or false whether you want to encrypt it or decrypt it so what it would receive is actually a string so i would say it's a constant string i don't want to change it and i would name it as file name and then there would be another thing that would, would be called the encrypt or decrypt flag. The flag will tell if uh, it's true or false. So encrypt or decrypt. Now constant string file name. I want to have to have this as a reference. I don't want to copy some kind of value. I don't want to add that copy. So I would add in a reference here so that it would re reference to that same exact variable. And at the end, we would just have the end if. Again, this is just default parameter guards, header guards. Um, and it does, it prevents you from uh, making multiple copies defined and declared inside of your program. Inside of that is done. So now we're going to move on to the next part here. And this is the encryption.cpp where the implementation is defined. So I'm just going to include more header files. One is going to be the encryption.h that I have recently added. The other one is going to be the file stream that I'm going to be using. Uh, and this is going to be for file input output reading. And the last one that I would might uh, use is C, uh, not C time, but C type. Um, as I, I think it's called CC type. And this is going to be used for uh, checking if the thing is uppercase or alphabet or stuff like that. So you'll later on check it out. So there are uh, two functions that are normally going to be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create first is that same one, which is encrypt encrypt file. And this will contain the file, which is the const, you know, uh, string reference. So reference like this i think it's uh, wait this and file name there's a lot of birds outside so you might hear a lot of bird chirping uh birds chirping so pool is the encrypt method e n c r y p t um and over here what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh try to open this file right so we're gonna define this later and I'm just moving on to the main function for now. And I'm just going to give you just some of the information. And before we go on and try to implement the Caesar cipher here, we're going to have to do all of that here. Um, over here, we're just giving the, you know, the basic implementation of how this would work. So E or E 
would mean that we would, would like to encrypt our file and the encryption part remember is pretty simple all we're going to do is uh, call that function so that was called encrypt file so e n y e n c r y encrypt file and it takes in a file name and it also takes in the mode um so if the mode is true right that means that it's the encryption part so i would actually add in something called just a thing so that the user could see that uh, the encryption process, ENY, encryption completed successfully. And there you go. And then we have the, um, the else part. So it's going to be over here. And it's in that case where um, the encrypt file didn't work. In that particular case, what you would do is I would generally perform perform a C error in case that the encryption didn't work and we'd say error unable to perform encryption. Okay. All right. So we're done with that. Now, the next condition after this this is just the inner if and else but now what we have to deal with is this thing after if it's not an e operation if it's either a decryption operation so if i say else if mode is equal to the decryption or it mode equals to the decryption like that okay so if the encrypt file encrypt file is equal to file name and false mode is equal to d and mode is equal to so all here what we're going to do is we're going to say if the mode is either d or you know capital d and that is when you press in uh, you know decryption the encryption function will call in with the false now as the value and We'll just give the same prompt again, um, decryption. So C-R-Y-P-T-I-O-N, completed. And then we say successfully, S-U-C-C-E-S-S-F-U-L-L-Y. Uh, decryption completed successfully. And we would have the end line here, like that. So this is done, encryption and decryption. Uh, but again, we have to, given the else condition, if uh, you know some kind of issue occurs, would we'll repeat the same thing that we've done c error and we'll say error unable um to perform decryption just so that the user would know that something wrong happened and we are there we just have to put an end line and i guess we're done okay so the last condition here is either if these two don't work if it's either if you didn't press E or D, then you would just give a prompt out and say C error, and I would say error invalid invalid mode selection. You and then I'll just instruct it to say use E, which is lowercase, uh, for encryption. And remember, you could do a capital as well, but I'm just I'm just gonna type this, or D, so D, for decryption. Okay, so now we are done with that. Uh, we could have this end line, and then we'll return zero right here. Beautiful. So we've done this part, and it's done. So now all we have to do is define this encrypt file method and that would give us the encryption thing so far so good with the header file here everything else is completed now everything that's left here is with this function that we have to write so <clears throat> now we're taking a file name and an encrypt variable i would like to add in the using namespace standard just in case now 
this uh, actually returns a boolean. So we would like to read the input file. So to open the input file, you could use the simple um, file handling uh, operator provided, which is input file stream in file, I'll call it input file. So capitalizing it, trying to capitalize it. There you go. Why is this not capitalizing? Okay, in file, um, file name. So the file name is going to be the name of a file. All right, so file name. Sorry about all this issues. My keyboard stops working sometimes. Okay, so now that is how we're going to input the file. And if it somehow doesn't work, if that file doesn't exist or something, or some kind of issue occurred, what we're going to say is in file. If not exist, so we'd say return false. And this, you know, the whole encrypt file function would turn off. Now, we, we have to actually read the content of the file. We have to read the content of the file. We, over here, what we did is we basically open the input file. Okay. So now we have to read the content of the file. And reading the content is super simple. We, we could read all of it in a string. So the remember of the content is just hello there. This is actually a string. And if it's so much, it's all a string. So what we could say is it's a string. So we'd say string content. And we would put in this operator, which is uh, is uh, I input stream buffer and underscore. Wait a minute. So underscore iterator and for every char you have to put it inside of the in file all right so that's how we're going to read it out and we we just need this operator here so that would do the working for it it would read the content of the file into a string and all after that we just have to safely close the file so file dot close. Okay. Now what we're going to do is once we read the file, we would like to perform our, you know, Caesar cipher operation. So I'm just going to zoom in a little and show you how this, it will actually work. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, uh, what we're going to do is actually perform a Caesar cipher operation in another function. So, the function will be called perform Caesar. So it's going to be called perform Caesar cipher. It will get the content and it will get the encrypt. And it will just have to return something, right? So it's going to get the content, which is the content that we got from the text file and the encrypt mode, whether it's encrypt or decrypt. So let's just define it up on the top here, over here. So the Caesar cipher will also be returning a Boolean and it will be called perform Caesar. S A S A E S A R. Cipher. I hope I spelled it correctly over here on the bottom. No, I didn't. So I'm just gonna have to paste it. S A E. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Perform Caesar cipher. Over here, we're gonna say the string reference variable. And the other thing is the Boolean encryption. Now, what we'd like to do is remember, like I explained before, that there's actually something that happens inside of the Caesar cipher. Um, there's like that key thing, the key, the step process that happens, you know, how many steps you're going to take to convert it. So that is going to be known as a shift variable. And I'm just going to put it as a number. And normally you would give the, you, um, you know, 
the person who's trying to say, uh, encrypt that message, the authority to have the shift number specified, whatever they want, right? But over here, we'll give the control um, and we'll just give it a hard coded value as three inside of our program. You can, you know, update it according to your needs if you want. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to hard code it. So, so you could see that the shift is over here in shift. And I said encrypt if it's true, right? I'm going to give it a positive three. And if it's false, I'm going to give it a negative three. I've done this before. This is called a ternary operator. So positive shift for encryption and negative shift for decryption. Next, after that, we're going to go into the content. We're going to try to go through with the content and, sh you know, apply the shift three, three, three. So uh, ABC would turn into the thing that we said. Um, so, you know, it would go ABC and then DEF. What happened over there? DEF. So that's what it would happen. Um, right here, I'm going to do for every character char. And I'm just going to get the reference variable again because now um, it's related. So what we're going to say is address of char from the content, right? And we're going to first check if the if the um, the CH value, this char, the character is an alphabet or not, just to make sure. So I'm saying if it's uh, is alpha, this is the CC type header file coming in action. So that's how I could check if it's an alphabet or not. Now to convert it, actually, I need a base format first. I need a or lowercase a so that I could, you know, uh, make my move from there. So for that, I would just use character base and that's going to be either my capital A or lowercase a, depending on if it's an uppercase or a lowercase letter. So if I say is the upper uh, the character, right? If it's true, then I'm going to use the base as the capital A. If it's false, I'm going to use the base as the lowercase a. And then the uh, the last part is where I'm going to, sh you know, shift the thing. So I'm going to say the shifted character will be and that's why I use this reference operator. So that only modifies within my CH and nothing else. So it doesn't create a copy or anything. And it just does it within that same reference. So I'm going to create a static cast. And this is basically the Caesar cipher happening here. So it's going to say char of the character. I'm going to get the CH uh, value letter. And I'm going to subtract it with the base, either uh, capital A or small k. I'm going to add it with the shift value, which is either plus three or minus three. Um, and then I'm going to add it 26. Now, one other thing that you would might see is I'm using 26, but and then I do 20 modulo 26. Now, this is meaning that there are 26 different letters in the alphabet. And I don't want to have something like 27. Like if someone said, uh, if even if it goes 27, it would just go back, modulo it and go back to the you know, first letter A. So that's what, you know, this process is actually saying here. And I'm just going to have the last thing, which is modulo 26 plus the base uh, of the letter. So the base was A or small a, right? Capital A or small a. So that's basically it of our, uh, you know, perform Caesar cipher. And we could just return the content. I mean, actually, we could just return the true variable here. Um, indicating that the thing worked, the encryption worked. And then you could just, you know, have that returned here. So if this encryption worked, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to create an output file and write the encrypted or decrypted content there. So we're going to have to create another, uh, we're going to create an output file. We never created a file, so output file um, and and writing the modified content, writing the modified content, either if it's encryption or decryption. So to write an output file, remember, again, file handling concepts. I have videos related to this. You could check it out in my channel. So output file stream, we could have output file, and then we have encrypt. And we also have a question. So, so it's just going to indicate that um, if you gave the encrypt as true, um, if the encryption process was true, 
then the name of the output file would be called encrypted okay i'm trying to name the file so that's why uh i gave a turner ternary operator here just to tell what should the name of the file be i'll just call it encrypted underscore and then the name of the existing file or if it's not uh you know the true if it wasn't encrypted and it was decrypted i could just simply call it as decrypted underscore and then again the same thing file name and a semicolon at the end okay so in the last case here i would say if the output file does not uh somehow create it it doesn't happen it does not get created so we'll just say false okay so the last thing i would add here is the the out file so it's out file and would have a content here and that should write all of it to my output file and then i would safely close this file as well dot close and don't forget to return zero at the uh, return true at the end so return true so now we wrote all of our code related to this encryption and decryption scheme and this should uh you know do all of that for us and this Caesar cipher is going to be performing the encryption or decryption process. And this, you know, code is calling it out over here. So let's just start out. I'm going to run the code. So I'm going to say CLS. And before everything, I'm just going to start out with the following. So let's just say, let's go back to our directory. And you can see that there are three different files and then one sample.txt containing you know hello there so now i have the command to you know run it so i'm going to say g++ main dot cpp encryption g r y p t i o n dot cpp i have an flag to change the output file and i'm just going to call it run so there you go we got an executable exe so let's just run that just type in run Okay, enter the name of the file that you want to encrypt. So I would just say sample.txt. Now he's saying encrypt or decrypt. I would say encrypt. And it would be by default shift of three, right? Plus three. So encryption completed successfully. It created an encrypted sample text for me. If I view it, you can see there's something like calling cool. Or call, well, I don't know what this is, but um, you can't basically read it. You can't tell if it's written hello world or not. How are you going to do it? Well, you could also pass that in. So if I do run again and enter the file name, now I would call it encrypted. So encrypted sample dot txt. And I would like to decrypt it now. So I would press D. Now it says over here, unable to perform decryption for some reason. So I would go back there and rerun that. And I would call encrypted underscore sample dot text. And I would press in D. Okay, so there is some kind of issue happening, unable to perform decryption. So I would go back uh, and see if the name of the file is correct. In C R Y C, ah, uh, yeah. So the name of the file wasn't even properly spelt. So I wrote something wrong. So I'm just going to have to spell it right. And, and I'm just going to type what I misspelled. So and, and typed it, I wrote dot underscore sample dot txt and i would like to decrypt it and decryption completed successfully and then there's this decrypted file and there it contains hello there amazing we've created this amazing process of encryption decryption using caesar cipher and this is so cool i am really loving this application and one more time we're gonna have the sample.txt um let's have something else so let's say quick um, brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so this is my you know sample text and uh, i'm gonna perform the encryption tool so then i'm gonna open up my encryption decryption tool and i'm gonna load that in so i'm just gonna say Again, I could uh, rerun the uh, uh, command that I've done before. So g++ main.cpp encryption. And 
.cpp hyphen o and run. <laughs> this would run the application. So you could see that there's a run.exe. Just type in run. And now I would have to give the name of the file. So the name of the file is called sample underscore. So sample.txt. And it would say that, would you like to encrypt or decrypt it? Let's encrypt it. Now the encryption is processed. This is the encrypted. And you could just ask the user how many shifts you would you like so you could have a more flexible Caesar cipher encryption tool, right? So encrypted sample dot text. I would like to decrypt it. I would press D. Okay, so again, there's some somehow I <laughs> misspelled that word again. So I'm just gonna have to type that uh, one more time. So run um, encrypted. So it's gonna be like that, I think. CY, CY, I'm just saying CY, misspelling this word, CYP, okay, CYP, CYP, okay, and I would like to decrypt it, and there you go, decryption completed successfully, and this is the decrypted uh, sample, and look at that, it just brought back the entire text that was hidden, a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I hope you love this project. It is super cool. You learned a lot of encryption schemes. You learned what deciphering means. Deciphering means what we just brought back. Um, you know, ciphertext, which was this kind of text. This is called ciphertext that we can't read. Um, Caesar cipher, you learned. You learned a lot in C++. And you, and you just built another cool project that you could put in your GitHub repository. And, you know, practice along and get better at programming. If you love this video, give it a like, share it with your friends. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think about this video. I would love to hear what your points of views are. If there's anything pro wrong in this or anything that you'd like to correct, uh, be happy to you know leave your feedback. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.